uh, on Tablighi Zamaat. And I just remembered that when I was in the Air Force, as a punishment, I was packed off <laughs> to go and attend the Tablighi Zamaat session for something that I had done. <laughs> So, and I'm sure that must have influenced me in some way. I don't know how, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? What is your second novel about the one that you just It's a love story. <laughs> it's about a marriage gone bad kind of story, yeah. But Alice Bhatti, there has to be more to it. Love. Alice Bhatti, religion you mean? There's like some in the background, but not really. And I mean, it's no, yeah, yeah. So we have about five minutes left, mm. so let's take, yep. Uh, is this working? Yeah. So your new book, uh, the Our Lady Alice Bhatti, mm. your short story as you mentioned, Burton Bhatti. Yeah, that, that was an excerpt from that. Okay. Yeah, that was an excerpt from. Let's get the Sorry. microphone over here. Uh, do, do you, uh, have you ever written or do you think you'll ever write in Urdu also? No, I write ur in Urdu constantly. I do lots of journalism in Urdu. I have yeah, kind in of terms written. Of no in terms of novel or short story? I, I, no, I've written plays in Urdu. I wrote a movie in Urdu, uh, which uh, Hassan Zaidi uh, made. Uh, but uh, no, short story or, or novel, I haven't, uh, I haven't written in Urdu. I mean, just connected to that, I don't know what, what, what you think. You know, generally, a great novel, a good novel, so sort of provides almost a unifying experience to a society. Hmm. Do you think in Pakistan, uh, English literature and what's being written in Urdu, you know, totally different sort of people in different type. You know, yeah, and, society and, and similarly, what's, really what's, what's written, being written in, in uh, Sindhi is, uh, you know, sort of, you don't know. And, uh, and we sort of don't even know if there are any writers in Balochi or not, right? I mean, uh, so, so yes, there are lots of disconnects. And uh, sort of uh, writing in English kind of, you know, can probably provide some entertainment slash catharsis to people who like, uh, you know, sort of can read in English. Uh, and then I think similarly with other languages, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very, as I said, it's very kind of, you know, sort of uh, uh, island type kind of, you know, situations. Let's take a couple more questions. Um, and someone we haven't heard from, are you standing up in the stripes? If you could, mm. I, I, do, have you already asked? I, I okay. Yeah, could you pass the microphone back, please? Hi, Mr. Hanif. Um, I, I also came from military background, grew up in the same GI years, and mm. your novel, Exploding mm. Mangoes, really hit me very hard. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to ask you, was it, uh, what were your motivations? Uh, were you writing because you, 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 wanted, you had a gro great story to tell, simply a great story? Or no, you wanted, I want uh, you wanted to be a prime mover for some kind of a change. That's my question number one. And if this being so, then where's your next novel? Because if you we were fighting against tyranny of 80s, of dictatorships in those days, I think now, more than ever, we need something even more resounding coming from you? I, I don't know what my motivation was. I think I wanted to write. Yeah, that was my first motivation. And I didn't have a story. And this happened to be the only story uh, that I had and I could tell. And I had obsessed about it uh, for a while as a journalist as well. So, so it, it was there. Um, I, I don't really believe that novels, especially written in English for a, like, you know, sort of a, a niche, rich, uh, middle class, upper middle class audience, like, you know, sort of change anything. Uh, I don't know. I think the best they can probably give you a few laughs or some cheap thrills or kind of, you know, occasionally turn you on. I, I don't think they kind of bring any change as such. I mean, I hope not. Like, not in my novel, no. Uh, and the second novel is, again, I'm trying to tell a, a story which kind of, you know, I'm, uh, which, uh, uh, because again, I want to tell a story, and this was the only story that I had that I could tell. Now, you know, sort of, I will, I will move on. Can I take two minutes to just tell a little anecdote? I was going to tell Huma, uh, but I'll just since all of you are here, so I'll share it with you. Uh, I, I wrote about it years and years and years ago, but uh, maybe you guys read or didn't read. Uh, Huma has uh, just done a story uh, about these Jews who used to live in Karachi. It's uh, in one of the magazines uh, today. 
and I was just telling her that she should have talked to me because I actually met uh, uh, some of those Jews who used to live in Karachi and then moved to uh, Israel in the 60s. Uh, as I was like about 10 years ago, I was as a BBC reporter, I was covering like, you know, sort of this and somebody told me there's a little town uh, in, uh, uh, in Israel, it's called Ramle, uh, which is full of uh, these Indian uh, Jews. So I thought, brilliant, I must go and, you know, sort of meet up with these uh, guys. So there was this little synagogue there. They were having like Hanukkah uh, type thing going on. So they said, just come there and everybody will be there and you can meet them. So they spoke like most of them were from Bombay and they kind of, you know, spoke Hindi so I could talk to them. And then for some strange reason, you know, sort of like these things that Indians do that, oh, this guy has come from London, please like, you know, now address us, give us a little speech. <laughs> and I didn't really have anything to say. I just told them about myself that I am uh, from uh, Karachi, but now these days I live in London. As soon as I mentioned the word Karachi, somebody started to cry in the back, like, you know, <gasps> and I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I, after that thing speech ended, I went and uh, uh, talked to this guy and he kind of, you know, hugged me and he told me that he, he was like, as a kid, he grew up in Karachi and he used to live here and, you know, sort of, he, he, he was calling his synagogue as our masjid, ke humari masjid waan pe hoti thi, aur wo Ayub Khan to itna achha hota tha, ab phir koi aagaya hai, musharraf hai, they had like, you know, very little idea that what was, what was going on. And he was like, you know, sort of just remembering ke achha, wo abhi tak hai, wo cinema hai, wo cheez hai, wo ye hai. And then I started asking him what his life was like uh, there in Ramle. So he kind of took me in a corner. He said, ke, you know, yahan pe sirf hum do ghar hain Pakistaniyon ke, ye baaki sare India se aaye hue hain, aur aapko to pata hai, ye Hindu hume kabhi maane ki nahi. I was like, yes. So we kind of suddenly, in the middle of the state of Israel, we started bonding as Pakistanis. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> okay. And on that note, please join me in welcoming and thanking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Martin Fryer of the British Council, Mr. Martin Fryer of the British Council to pre present the gifts yes. to the author and the moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. So you know my book is about the Indian Jews. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, so I'm, I have you been to Ram? No, I know a lot of people in Ram. Yeah. I wanted to ask you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm a hero for mm -hmm. I'm in education. That's why I'm asking yeah. this mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. That you had to talk to the kids yeah, about your book or whatever. Okada's people have to learn more about it. Yes, but they don't have to learn more about it.